Hi, I'm Nico. Welcome back to the channel. It's been a while since my last video because I was busy building a shelf. If there is a one rule that's very important in black and white film photography is this one. Expose for the shadows, develop for the highlights. You probably have heard this one before and maybe you understand it perfectly already, but as I was experimenting with films, I stumbled upon um, a pair of pictures that uh, perfectly uh, illustrate that rule, so I thought I would put it out there for everyone's benefit. Let's do it. So when you look at these two pictures, uh, I'll tell you right away, the one on the left is shot with uh, T-Max 100, the Kodak 100 ISO film with T-grain technology. And the picture on the right is shot with Ilford's FP4, it's a traditional grain, 125 ISO film made by Harman Technologies. So the story of these two frames is that they were shot uh, through the same camera. I just switched backs on my Hasselblad, so they were shot seconds uh, apart from each other with uh, exactly the same settings under the same light. Um, so they received the same amount of light at exposure. Then I took both films, I put them in the same tank and I develop them together. So that means that they received exactly the same development too. So here are two different films receiving the same amount of light and then the same amount of um, development. Why do they turn out so different? So the first part of our uh, statement is exposed for shadows. So let's have a look at those. And um, you can see that the picture on the left, T-Max 100, has uh, very nice shadows, they are full of detail, they are rich, um, they are uh, very well uh, reproduced. So this is probably a film that has received the right amount of light at exposure. Uh, on the other hand, the right hand side picture, uh, FP4, even though it's, the fa it's supposed to be a fastest film at 125 ISO versus 100, you can see that the shadows are way more dense, uh, which gives the image a very contrasty feeling. And that a lot of detail is lost in those leaves. Uh, it goes to black, it blocks, as we say, very much earlier than uh, the T-Max image does. So that means that even though those two pictures receive the same amount of light, uh, it was enough for T-Max, it was not enough for FP4. Does that mean that FP4 is a slower film than T-Max? Maybe. In my process with Rodinal, with my digitation techniques, it is, because as you can see, it doesn't record as much shadow detail. Uh, it could be that in other developers or in the hands of uh, other operators, it's actually a faster film. I don't know about that. Uh, next up is the development. Because the question you might be asking yourself now is, could we have developed longer? to get more shadow detail out of FP4? And the answer is no. You expose for highlights, for shadows. You develop for highlights. Um, and you can see here the highlights, they are a bit blown on the picture on the right. If you look at the left hand side of the frame where the, the wall meets the window, um, there's not so much detail on the white wall. You can't really uh, make out what's there. I think the, the detail is lost there. If you compare to the picture on the left, it's much more milky, it's smooth, it still has detail on that wall. So that means that the amount of development that we gave those two films was adequate for T-Max because it did not uh, overdevelop the highlights, but it was already too much for FP4. And that's why detail is lost in those highlights. So that shows you that the only way to get better shadows uh, from that FP4 negative would have been to expose more to begin with. As it is, we already developed it for too long. It has blown the highlights on the left hand side of the frame, but it hasn't done anything to fix those shadows. So I think, I think this is why these two pictures are a great illustration of the idea that you expose for your shadows, you feed your film with enough light at capture, and then you develop for uh, the highlights, which means you develop like as short as you can, so that the highlights don't have uh, a lot of time to be in the revelator and uh, blow. Now, I'm not saying that the picture on the left is right and the picture on the right is wrong. Left is right, right is wrong. Uh, it may be that you prefer uh, the contrast in the picture on the right. 
the advice that people generally give is to um, adjust your process for the least uh, contrasting negative because you can always add contrast. You can obviously not remove contrast because you can't make up detail in the dark areas of the FP4 picture or in the bright areas if the, if the detail was not captured or if it was uh, destroyed by the development process. So you can always add contrast to the picture on the left, but you cannot remove contrast from the one on the right. Which is why most people will tell you, in general, as a general piece of advice, to aim for a negative that looks like the one on the left. But the truth is, you're an artist, you make decisions if you like the picture on the right better, and if this is the contrast level you're aiming for, then why not tailor your process to get that contrast right from the start? Because for me, a very noble goal is to spend as little time post-processing as possible. That's a very valid and aspirational goal. So everything I've been saying so far is kind of hinting at something called the zone system and the idea that you uh, measure the contrast range of a scene and uh, you adjust your uh, development to make the most out of that contrast range. Either reduce it if the scene is too contrasty or um, increase it to have a punchier negative from a very uh, low contrast scene. So if you made it this far in the video you probably have two questions. The first one is how exactly do I uh, expose for the shadows? How do I meter my actual photographs? And uh, that's something I will have a video on out very soon because uh, I think uh, how to rate your film and how to meter a scene are uh, fascinating subjects and there's so much uh, information online that is wrong so I want to get into that uh, on its own video and you will ask me how much uh, development is too much and when do you start affecting your highlights unfortunately uh, to answer that question there is no substitute to experimentation and uh, note takings and adjustments to your process over time uh, ideally you want uh, things like um, measuring time agitation um, water temperature to be as uh, consistent as possible when you develop your film and if you use a lab that's great because your lab is consistent and uh, then it's a matter of taking notes and figuring it out if you notice on a roll of a film you develop that your highlights are too hot uh, then the next time you shoot the same kind of scene you should still expose the same way because you expose for your shadows but you should reduce the development uh, either tell your lab to pull the development by maybe one stop or if you're doing it at home start with uh, you think usually the advice is to start with 15 percent less time and go from there take notes after every uh, process and in no time at all you should be a master at developing black and white film to a contrast range that is super easy to print or scan that's it for today thank you very much for tuning in uh, as I was hinting at, there is another video coming out very soon about exposing for black and white film, but until then, take care, enjoy the outside, Corona is over, yay!